Hey Kinders! In this tutorial, we're going to piggyback onto two very important previous exercises, those of count by twos and count by threes. So you may have guessed, we're going to learn to count by fours. Now unlike the numbers six, seven, and eight, the number four deserves its very own counting routine. Honestly, because it's just so easy to use and so easy to learn. When you count by fours, you only see the even numbers and the one digit sequence completely repeats by the time you get to 10 counts of four. So another way to think about counting by fours is that you're simply gonna count by twos and skip every other count of two. As always, I like to talk about why this method is important, specifically how your child is gonna be benefiting by learning this method. So counting by fours sets up the very obvious which is to be able to reliably name the multiples of four, or a multiplication, and to be able to name the complementary facts when dividing four into those multiples, or division. But counting by fours opens the dimension to two other very important dimensions in arithmetic. First of all, the number four is very unique because it is the first number that appears moving away from zero, which is not prime. So a prime number is any number that can only be divided by other whole numbers, uh, the number one or itself. In other words, the number four is the smallest composite integer that exists. So four can be divided by four, it could be divided by one obviously, but it can also be divided by two. But counting by fours also reinforces our competence of counting by twos and bolsters this notion of having and doubling. Since four is two's exact double, counting up to any factor of four is naturally the same as counting up to the double of that same factor of two. Likewise, we're able to simulate counting by eights because eight is four's double and vice versa, four is eight's half so that is reminiscent of counting by twos. Anyways, does your child need to know all this? Absolutely not. All of this jargon is completely unimportant when it comes to learning the methods and getting our rocket launch start in arithmetic. But I do like to explain the theory behind it because it helps to support actually what is going on in the child's mind as they're developing. So give this exercise a try and remember to practice during free moments throughout your day. After a few sessions, let me know down in the comments what things you start to notice about your child's math ability and competence with numbers. As always, thanks so much for watching, and now, let's get crazy with some math. Face your child and say, now let's count by fours. Put up both of your hands like balls with the backs of your hands facing outward and have your child mirror you. Remember to start with your thumb on the right, which means they are starting with their thumb on their left. Say the numbers loud and clear as you work your way up. Zero, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, and 40. Practice until your child can perform the counting method on their own. Try linking to the next set of 10 fours by flashing your hands up and away. Reset your hands and ask, what is the next four after 40? Did she say 44? After some practice, follow up with some naming questions, such as, what is four times three? She is counting by fours up to three fingers. What is four times nine? She is counting by fours up to nine fingers. What is eight times four? She is counting by fours up to eight fingers. How many fours go into 28? She is counting by fours up to 28 or seven fingers. How many fours go into eight? She is counting by fours up to eight or two fingers. Make up some more problems on your own and remember to practice during free moments throughout your day. 
Subscribe to Kinder's Guide for daily and weekly exercises, tips, and math hacks. Link up to recommended resources and materials in the description below.